get you excited about wood design. It's getting a revival, a renaissance right now. But unfortunately, a lot of schools don't really teach wood design at the undergraduate level. And so there are a lot of us out there that maybe are engineers that didn't get an exposure to wood in their undergraduate education. And on the job is sometimes not the best place to experiment and learn. So hopefully this becomes a, a, a webinar that will be insightful to you. And even if you are a seasoned professional with wood, I'm going to have some tidbits I think are brand new to you. So let's get started a little bit. Our learning objectives are going to be the design of wood columns, posts, beams, joists, and rafters. So those are all essentially very simple building blocks of our wood structures. And we'll learn how we can apply adjustment factors that affect the beam and column capacities, or specifically those stresses and modulus of elasticity properties that wood has in those different members. We'll also give you a brief introduction about wood connectors and how they can get used, and also a brief introduction to wood diaphragms and shear walls for our lateral design of wind and earthquake. But what's going to be really a focus uh, that follows the Codemaster, and if you aren't familiar, the, the Codemaster is a laminate, six folded pages of shortcuts on how to design wood structures, and there's a number of different types, but um, SK Goshen Associates has published these, and actually I am the one that um, laid out the wood design code master uh, for my classes here at the university level, and I actually did it when I was in private practice for about 20 years, and, and now it's actually published. And I'll be following some of those steps along the way, besides the wood and uh, wood connectors and diaphragms, which are separate from the code master. The code master has lots of members, uh, lots of um, information in it that are associated with the individual members you might be designing, including an, a one-stop shopping spot for all the adjustment factors. Any of you that have worked through the NDS, the National Design Specification for Wood Design, which is adopted by the Building Code, is familiar with sometimes a lot of the adjustment factors are scattered across multiple publications and multiple chapters, and this actually distills it all in one location, which I found to be really helpful. And it also has sections called the Secrets of the Code Master, which are little these tidbits that you you learn along the way that helps make our lives a little easier when we design wood structures. And as I mentioned before, the NDS, which is the wood design code for the United States, it's adopted by the IBC, the International Building Code, as well as the loading criteria that you find in ASCE 716. These are the ones that are pretty much current in the United States where local jurisdictions have been adopting the latest and greatest. We don't quite yet have the next edition of the IBC adopted uh, by jurisdictions, but it's just around the corner. The NDS does have three publications associated with it, besides the code design about how to design wood members themselves. There's a supplement called the NDS supplement that has the reference design stresses and section properties of a number of different types of wood and shapes. And we also have the special design provisions for wind and seismic, which is the 2015 edition since they didn't update that for the 2018, so it's still applicable. Why is this important? Well, 80 to 90% of all structures in the US actually are made with wood frame construction. And it gets even worse out here on the West Coast where 96% of all buildings in Los Angeles County have been found to be wood construction. And not just simply on the West Coast, if you look at Memphis as an example, 89% of all buildings, wood frame construction. And out here in California, if you're just looking at California residential, we are looking at nearly 99% of wood frame construction being used. So this is incredibly important that engineers have a familiarity with this, whereas in the past, sometimes it was just simply, it was simply found to be engineered using prescriptive requirements with very little engineering, just simply the contractor would go out there and follow rules of thumb, but it's becoming more and more difficult to do that and engineers are getting more involved with every code cycle. So this 10-step process that is in the Codemaster is sort of the framework that I'll be using for today's presentation. And the first step is always sort of determining the loads and the load combinations that might go along with the project you're looking at. And typically, when it comes to wood design in the United States, 
allowable stress design is really still the most common by far. It is what uh, I still teach in the university level, and it is still very common. You'll see other universities still teaching ASD, whereas, st whereas steel design and concrete design have long since gone into LRFD or strength-based design. Masonry is now pretty much that way now. Wood is still st mostly in the allowable stress design realm. And it's going to be that for a while, I think, even though you can design it either way. So these are the load combinations associated with allowable stress design. 